Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Magically Cruising, the cruise podcast where we share our personal cruise experience and tips with you to help you make the most out of your next cruise. My name's Kieran. I'm an independent travel agent specializing in all things cruise, Disney, and North America, and I'm joined by my fellow co-host, Sarah. Sarah, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, I am Sarah, and I am one half of Cruising for All, Cruising with Kids, which is a linked website covering two different aspects of cruising. I'm one half of the team. The other half of the team is not with us today. She's not so good because, ironically, she has a hangover. I say it's very fitting that we're doing an episode about drinking. And once again, <laughs> Donna's not with us as well because she's hungover. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you guys had listened to our full episode where we talk about kind of whether a drinks package is worth it for you or not, what we said is we would then do a bit of a deeper dive into the individual cruise lines and talk a little bit more about how they do drinks packages and what their approach to it is. Uh, and for today's episode, we're going to talk about one of my favorite cruise lines, which is Virgin Voyages. And I think it's fair to say that they do drinks packages very differently, like they do everything differently. They have their own way of doing a drinks package um, on board their ships as well. Okay, so you're going to have to lead today because... Having never sailed with Virgin, obviously I have no clue, but I'm interested to find out what you've got to say. Well, it's going to be a short episode. There isn't one. <laughs> so there we go. Let's call, <laughs> let's call it done. There's no drinks package. <laughs> um, no, typical Virgin being Virgin. So what they've done is they, and I I agree with them. At first I was a bit like, what? There's no drinks package? Why? Um, but what they've done is they've introduced a concept called the bar tab and the way it works is much like when you put your card behind the tab the, behind the bar to kind of start running a tab you can do the same as well so you can prepay um, in increments of $300 for your bar tab but for every $300 you add Virgin will add a bonus of $50 as standard there are different ways depending on kind of your loyalty level or if you sail through the first year with Virgin and you get different status levels you can get bonus amounts and sometimes throughout the year as well, they will do a bonus amount as well. So I know last year, if you booked, you got a bonus $100 for every three you put on. So definitely keep an eye out for them and work with your TA on when those offers are running. At the moment, they're not. Um, so it is just the standard $300 and then $50 for every one you add on. Um, what's unique about it is then you can use that to spend on any drinks on board the ship if you wanted to. So there's no limitations on the amount you spend. If you want to buy a bottle of champagne or a bottle of wine, you can totally do that. If you want to buy a bottle of rum, you can do that. Um, but if you just want to literally pay for kind of soft drink, well, soft drinks are included anyway, but what I mean is if you want to pay for like uh, mocktails or press juices, you can use that money from the bar tab to spend towards all drinks on board the ship. So how do they charge? Is it is it a card? Do you charge it to a card? Uh, no. So Virgin don't have a typical cruise card. They have um, a wearable device called the Sailor Band, which is like a um, recycled plastic band you wear around your wrist, very much like the medallion technology on board Princess without the extra bits um, but basically you wear this wristband and then your bar tab you have to work out whether or not you want to do it kind of um, per person or not but there's no limitations on you have to buy a drink for yourself so it's not like I buy a bar tab for myself and only I can have drinks from that bar tab I can buy drinks for anyone I want so if I make friends on the ship I can buy them a drink um, if my partner wants to buy a drink he can charge it onto the room as well there's a few technicalities around kind of which bar tab the money will come from so if you link one card to the cabin but you have multiple bar tabs then the cabin will treat it as if everyone in that cabin could just charge to both bar tabs regardless of whose band they're on if you're traveling with friends then you can totally have it that you've got your bar tab and they've got their bar tab and you've got separate credit card charges as well it's a really boring technical thing basically about kind of whether you're sailing together as a couple or you're happy to split the bill or whether or not you're kind of sailing as friends together, but you want your own separate bills. It can all be done. Speak to your travel agents, speak to sailor services at Virgin. They will guide you through that process. But you totally can have your own bar tabs, or you can just have one on the cabin and then charge as, as and when you want. Right, so I've got quite a few questions, actually. So first of all, the wristband, do you have to wear it, or can you just keep it in your bag? You don't have to wear it, but that is your room key. That is your charge card. That's how you get on and off the ship. So you definitely right. have to have it on you, but you don't have to wear it. No, have it on your wrist. Um, the other thing was what happens if your bar tab runs out? Like, do you have to buy another bar tab or does it just get charged to your cabin? Once you run out of bar tab, it just then goes into standard charging then. Um, so it just right. goes on to your cabin bill and then comes off the credit card you've allocated. Obviously, if you don't allocate a credit card, then you can't charge. You've got to go to sailor services and top up any typical cruise fare after that point. But yeah, once you run out of bar tab and you can keep in the sailor app, you can see how much you've got left on your bar tab. So say, I don't know, say you met loads of friends, like really loads, and you bought them all drinks, and you've spent your $700, which was $600 you've bought, and 100 that you've got as a bonus. 
could you yep. then buy another bar tab? No, it has to be bought. I think it's 24 or 48 hours before you sale. That's when the right. cutoff for a bar tab ends because that's obviously it's a promotion prepay for your drinks ultimately then once you can still pay ad hoc if you wanted to so there's no need to have a bar tab and you just right. miss out on that bonus save that bonus loot basically that bonus 50 dollars um but once you're on board the ship you just basically charge to your room as normal if you don't want to add on a bar tab how much are the drinks i mean do you, have you got any idea like a, a rough guide of like how much is the glass of wine or how much is the cocktail yeah really reasonably priced as well because soft drinks are included as well within virgin voyages so say right. if you're having a rum and coke you're only paying for the rum you're not paying for the coke so um cocktails can be anywhere from 11 to 13 dollars um soft drinks i'm uh, sorry so spirits and a, and a, a soda will be seven six seven dollars depending coffees three dollars if you want to get a premium coffee um beer is anywhere between say right about the five dollar territory so the drinks are really right. reasonably priced regardless of the bar tab anyway um, there is some graphics somewhere that I have where I think it works out something like you can get 30 cocktails, if I'm right, per bar tab is the average they've right. worked out on across the ship. Um, so it does go a long way once you kind of um, add it onto your, your account. Yeah, so that leads on to another question, which is what's included? Because you've, you've mentioned a few times, oh, that's included, or oh, that's included. So there are things included in your sailing. So like every cruise line, anything in the buffet or the galley, as Virgin call it, is going to be included. So you're going to have your um, drip coffee is included, tea is included, soft drinks are included. So if you want kind of Coke, lemonade, all that type of stuff, you just help yourself or you can just order it and they'll bring it over for free for no charge. No gratuities either because gratuities are automatically included in the cruise fare as well. There's no gratuities on drinks other than local sales tax. So obviously, say in Barcelona, you'll pay EU sales tax, but there's no gratuities. Mm. That's all included in the cruise fare. Um, so your money goes a lot further as well because that's not being eaten up by gratuities. Um, but yeah, so the only things you really need to pay for are going to be press juices. So if you want a smoothie, then that's chargeable. Coffee is chargeable if you want to dip barista style. So if you want a handmade coffee, then that's chargeable. And then any alcoholic drink, that's chargeable as well. I know you've mentioned this before. You can get drip coffee, can't you? And that's included. Yes. Yeah. And drip then... coffee from the galley is included. Is it? Is it only the galley? Is there anywhere else on the ship you can get that? Uh, I don't know as a fact because I've never tried to get any coffee anywhere else, to be honest. I normally have a drip coffee with my breakfast. And then if I'm having coffee anywhere else, I've only ever taken a barista style one. So no. I don't know for sure. Sorry. So if you went to a bar and you wanted a Diet Coke, is that included or do you have to go to the galley to get that? No, it's included. You'd go up to any bar or any ship and ask right. for a soft drink and they will happily give you a soft drink um, included. Brilliant. So it's quite an easy system then, isn't it? Once you get used to it. That's it. It's different. But it makes it so much easier. And what I really like about it, don't get me wrong, there is the concern of how much have I drunk today and am I running out of money on my bar tab? That definitely is a very real thing, especially if you're big drinkers and especially on the party nights as well when you're kind of getting a bit, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm another one, I'm all the merry. Um, but it's the most relaxed ever because that awkward feeling of you make friends and you're kind of like, we're having a drink and I would like to buy you a drink, but we're on the drinks package, you're not on the drinks package. And that awkward feeling of kind of like, oh, have you got, you know, there's none of that because you can buy rounds if you're a big rounds people. Um, there's no concern about it. It's just ultimately a cash sum of money um, on, on your room sat there to be allocated on drinks. Yeah. It can, once it's in a bar tab, it can only be used on drinks. So you can't, you just go, oh, I've not drunk that much. I'm going to go and use that money and go to the spa. You can't do that. Right. There's a separate pot of money for ship stuff. So all the entertainment, the, I say entertainment, but any of the extra kind of chargeable activities like the um, chargeable shows, um, spa treatments, they all come out of a pot of money called Sailor Loot, which is basically onboard credit in Virgin terms. Uh, that's a separate pot of money for that. Now, Sailor Loot can also be used for drinks, but bar tab money can only be used for drinks. That's the only thing to be aware of, right. of if you're, is knowing the difference of whether you've got bar tab or Sailor Loot because... Sailor Luke can be spent on anything on board, but bar tab can only be used in the bars in alcohol and drinks. Right. So is there any way at all on Virgin Voyages of getting drinks included? Uh, yeah. So at the moment, anyway, they've got a really good promotion if you book now, whereby you can get $600 bar tab included in all the fares at the moment. don't know how long that's going to last for. I've been told it's going to last up until the middle of April, so I don't know if that will still be relevant by the time this goes live. But separate to that, outside of any sort of promotions they are running, then if you decide to stay Rockstar, which is their version of um, kind of the suite level service, then depends on the level of Rockstar. So they have Mega Rockstar and Rockstar. If you go in Rockstar, then you have your in-room bar tab, they call it. So you have an in-room mini bar, basically. That's full. It's full bottles of spirits. You can get full bottles of rum, 
um, tequila, anything you want type of thing for you to drink in your room. And then obviously you can just order soft drinks for free for your mixers if you wanted to then as well. So that's unlimited for your sailings, everything they'll replenish it as and when, but it can only be used in your cabin. Uh, anything you drink outside of your room, then you have to pay for what, with however you want to pay for it. But definitely in your room, it's as much as you want to drink. If you go into Mega Rockstar, then they give you what is called the Daily Bar Tab. Now, I've never got to the bottom of what the limit on this is. I've been told it's pretty much, it's kind of abuse limited, as in it's to stop you just drinking ad hoc and, and as much as you want. I think you can't get bottles on it. But definitely if you're staying in Mega Rockstar, you still get that in-room bar as well to drink in your cabin. Um, but you can then also get um, a daily allowance to spend outside of your cabin around the ship as well. So Mega Rockstar is pretty much all-inclusive as much as you want. I think this one is worth pointing out that if you go to Bimini the, um, or the beach club on Bimini as well, you can also use your bar tab on Bimini as well. And same wise, if you're Rockstar level uh, or at least Mega Rockstar level, you can also then access your daily bar tab on their private beach resort as well. So just to, to make you aware of if you are traveling to their private resort, you can still use your bar tab and your sailor loot as well on the resort area as well. And I'm guessing that it's the same in the restaurants. Yeah, they, well, that's the thing. It's just because there's no like... Yeah, it's just you pay for drink ultimately. That's it. It sounds yeah. really like there should be a catch, but there really isn't a catch. That's the thing about it. There's no limitations. Anywhere you can buy a drink that is a virgin bar, you can use your bar tab to pay for it. Basically, what it doesn't include things like them. The bar crawl. So Grog Walk is their bar crawl. Shot for Shots is their drink making class. Um, you can't use your uh, bar tab to pay for that. That has to come out of Sailor Loot or get charged to your room. So it's just. I, I got caught out on that when we did put it on thinking we could use it for um, Grog Walk, the um, bar crawl on board. Unfortunately, you can't. That is separate money. That has to come out of a separate pot of money. Uh, it is literally just for drinks orders. But you can use it if you want to buy a bottle of champagne. If you want to just shake the champagne, which is a Virgin Voyages feature as well. So once you're on board the ship, if you bring out the if you open up the Sailor app on your phone and shake your phone in the air, um, it'll activate a feature called Shake for Champagne, whereby you then confirm that you're happy to, and then um, they will find you where you are on the ship and bring you a bottle of champagne as well. You can use that money um, out of your bar tab as well if you wanted to to pay for Shake that for Champagne. That is so clever because who isn't going to do it? Is it a glass or a bottle? It's a whole bottle of Moet, or Moet, so how, even I should say. How, how, how much is that? So it's $99 plus tax. Can you imagine? <laughs> when you've had a drink. <laughs> Your husband's like <laughs> trying to there wrestle is, you to the ground. <laughs> so we tested it, but then we've also done it as well. So uh, there is a button to confirm. So you definitely you do shake it, and there's a really cool animation that comes up. Um, and then you've got to confirm it that you're definitely happy for it to happen. So there's no accidental shake for champagnes turning up. Don't get me wrong, um, but it is a really cool feature. Like we've tested it in two different locations on the ship, and yeah, they found us without any problems because obviously they have your photo ID from when you get on the ship, so they know who to look for. Um, but there's a whole team of people who are just there to staff the Shake the Champagne feature as kind of where you are that on the ship. That is so it's clever. Cool. Yeah, you, everybody's going to do it. Right, can you get pink? Pink. Champagne. What if yeah, you prefer pink? pink? Oh, so you can get pink oh, as on well. Shake, no, Shake the Champagne, sorry, is specifically branded by Moet. So it is a bottle oh. of Moet Champagne. So Shake the Champagne is just Moet. But you can get it. So Sip is the, the champagne bar on board. They've got all kinds of champagne on board as yeah, well. Except and for pink. The other thing as well is I should probably talk about Sail Away Hour as well. So Unique to Virgin Voyages as well, Sail Away Hour, which should be when the ship sails away, but it sometimes isn't. But basically there's an hour when the captain does his announcement, that one announcement they do on the sailing after their announcement is Captain Sail Away Hour, and there's unlimited bubbles for one hour basically on board Virgin Voyages. And yes, I have tried my best and had nine glasses of champagne in that hour. <laughs> I've been very drunk for the rest of the day. <laughs> and is it, is that free or do you pay a certain amount? It's free. Yeah, Ooh. on Sail Away, basically. So for one hour on Sail Away, usually it's about, say, 6 or 7 p.m., basically. So as the ship is supposed to be sailing away anyway, they will do an announcement ship-wide and every single bar will be doing it. And it's not like you, they, they are ready for it. They are ready for it with them stacked up, ready to go and... It is abusable. I have definitely on multiple sailings drunk at least seven was my first sailing. Nine is the most I've ever had. Nine glasses of bubbles. I need to go on a virgin cruise with you and Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and last cruise, they changed their strategy, didn't they, to, to make us drink less. <laughs> so it's funny because I had loads of customers on with me one time and then I was literally messaging them all like, hey, stay away out, quick, get to a bar, get as much of Prosecco as you want because it is. Like, they do change the brand, so you're never guaranteed. So, like, the one sailing, it was just sparkling wine. The next sailing, it was pink um, Prosecco. So, it does depend on, like, what they can get in the port. But definitely, 
stay in the hour for an hour is unlimited bubbles as much as you want. If you're staying in Rockstar level, then they have um, bubble or cocktail hour, um, drinks hour anyway in the Rockstar Richard's rooftop area. So there's an hour there where you can usually as well every day. And I think it's 4 p.m. ish. You can usually just go for a whole hour and have as much um, champagne or sparkling wine as you want as well from Richard's rooftop if you stay in Rockstar level. Um, the other thing as well, they've started introducing sail away hours for loyalty as well. So at the moment, their right. loyalty is Deep Blue Extras. So if you are a member of that, which means still on, you get one hour sail away on another night as well then. So there's another one hour then. Usually on the after right. ship, as you're sailing out of one of the ports, there's unlimited cocktails for an hour. We had, again, sparkling wine and sangria as we were sailing out of, I can't remember the port, I think it was Cagliari. Uh, I can't remember. JCO, I think it was. Um, so for an hour, again, unlimited cocktails. There's another package you can have as well called Splash of Romance, which the whole other conversation for Splash of Romance, but basically you get like a spa pass, you get um, aphrodisiac bites, they call them. So you get these little chocolates or sweets in your room each day. Um, you can have a fresh juice each day, but you also get shake for champagne as well, as well as another sail away hour. So on, on our last voyage, we had three sail away hours um, on board the ship because we have the Splash of Romance package, which is $199 for two people. We had Deep Blue Extras, which gave us loyalty. So we had Sail Away Hour for that. And then obviously Sail Away on the first night as well. So we had right. three Sail Away <laughs> Hours on the ship where we were very drunk in the space of an hour quite quickly. So I know this is never going to probably happen to you or I, but say you've got a $700 tab. Bad tab. Um, uh -huh. And you spend 500 What that? What happens? Because obviously 100 of that you've in effect got free, haven't you? Do you just have yeah. to spend it or lose it? Your spend it tab. or lose it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's the only thing to be so, aware of is spend it or lose it. There are things you can obviously do. I think you can buy in your, you can use it for room service orders in, uh, for drinks in your room as well. So you can buy like canned drinks as well. Um, so if you think you're not going to get through your bar tab, then look for ways to kind of just take premix cocktails well, and take them away off the, the ship. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what a lot of people do. They usually blow their like last hundred, two hundred dollars on just shaking the champagne on the last night or two because they realised I haven't actually spent as much as I thought. But I'll be honest, it's rare that people are left with a lot of money unless you're just somebody who gets one included as a promotion. That's the only time I've ever heard of anybody who's maybe not spent it. They're not big drinkers. They've had the bonus bar tabs for, for because of the promotions, and then they've never spent it. But you've not paid for it in the first instance anyway. In that case, so tipping culture. I know mm -hmm. that gratuities are included in your sailing but what about the crewmates yeah. so do people still tip the crewmates at the bars yeah this is such a hot topic at the moment um a lot of the facebook groups that i'm an admin for for virgin voyages and a member of uh, what you're going to find is a big cultural divide and i think we've talked about doing a full episode on tipping culture yeah. on cruise ships just because it does vary by the region and the sailor ultimately so Gratuities are always included in all Virgin Voyages fares, regardless of what fare, you, well, how much you pay. So you don't have to tip, and the crew are not expected to tip. They're paid a higher salary by Virgin so that they don't have to depend on tips. Everyone, even the people cleaning the cabins, bar waiters, things like that. There's no expectation as well that you do need to tip. So that whole thing about if I tip, I'm going to get served better or more. There's no expectation for it. And I've never been disadvantaged because I don't tip. And we, we, we tip what we need to on a cruise ship. But again, I think British culture and European culture, we're not a massive tipping culture country. So there's no need to do it. However, I know a lot of, now that the tips are in America during winter, tipping culture has become a big topic at the moment because a lot of Americans are struggling with the mentality of, should I tip, shouldn't I tip? I know a lot of Americans mm. do, and some crew are accepting them. I've heard stories that some crew are refusing them because it's not expected and Virgin don't want it to become, um, that they're known for a tipping culture because they are paying... Mm their staff a reasonable salary so yes it's a hot topic with virgin i don't think right. anyone's going to find a happy medium because americans are going to say the brits are cheap and we should be tipping and the brits are going to go you're stupid you shouldn't be tipping because you're already paying those tips as part of your cruise fare so why are you uh. tipping more again i think this is just going to be that age-old cultural debate <laughs> about how everyone feels about it i'm not si i'm not saying that if you do tip you're not going to get preferential treatment i'm not saying that that, that wouldn't happen i'm sure it would but I don't think you need to. I've never felt like I've been disadvantaged or left over because I've not tipped. And Virgin have a lot of, they have a really high crew to guest ratio for the size of ship they're in as well. So I've never had to wait long for a drink. <laughs> like even in the manor, right. when the manor is happening at, you know, at the one in the morning and there's loads of people on the bar, I wait maybe like two, three minutes to get a drink. The staff are on it. They're really quick. They're really efficient. Drinks are coming out left, right, and center. You don't have to worry about 
I need a tip to get better service on board Virgin Voyages. The standard is already there before that type of culture comes into it. Can I ask, actually, I've got another question, because Virgin is obviously American. Um, mm-hmm. So what's the, because you can sail with them from 18, can't you? So what's the laws in Europe, drinking laws with 18-year-olds? So it's done by the ports they're departing from. So from Europe right, is okay. 18 plus. Yeah. In America, right, you okay. can sail from 18, but you can't drink until 21. Until 21. From so American as... departures. Okay, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I think it's been a really good overview into kind of how different Virgin do drinks packages anyway, and why we thought this would be a good series as well, because every cruise line approaches it a little bit differently. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about Virgin Voyages, we do also have a full episode about Virgin Voyages as well. So hand that one down. It's a review I did from when we were on board Valiant Lady. Um, but if you are looking to book a Virgin Voyages cruise, I would love to help you. I specialize in Virgin Voyages. You can find me online under magical-traveler.com or I'm on all social media under magical T-R-V-L-R. And I have tons of information on my website and my YouTube channel about sailing with Virgin Voyages. But Sarah, I know you guys also have a lot of content on your website as well about Virgin, but also other cruise lines and all their drinks packages as well. Where's the best place to find that? Um, so we haven't got loads on Virgin. We've got your food guide on Virgin. Um and that's probably about it. Probably you've got more on your site than ours. But any other cruise line, we are cruising for all, cruising with kids, and we're on social media too. And guys, if you have enjoyed this, found this episode useful, then definitely please, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a like and a follow. Or if you listen to this on iTunes, then uh, our Apple Podcasts even, definitely please leave us a review. It just lets Apple know that you've enjoyed this, and then they can recommend it to many other people who will find this useful as well. Other than that, guys, all the best, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!